Welcome back. Um, in this section, I'm going to share three steps that you can use to reduce your overall risk, in particular in the online environment. So the first step is to secure your data. And that means using security software on all of your electronic personal devices and keeping them updated. Secondly, of course, definitely use stronger passwords and don't use the same password for many of your accounts. I would also suggest that you use a PIN or another type of passcode for unlocking laptops, tablets, smartphones, and things like that. So if a device is stolen, it'll be much harder for thieves to get what's on it. Now, there's a new thing called uh, two-factor authentication, and some of you may already be aware of this, but what it happens is it'll require that you provide a second piece of information to verify your identity. It may require you to use an authenticator app uh, with a unique number that changes every 30 seconds or have a code set into your email. Another way that it usually happens is if you're using a credit card with an authentication, when you use the credit card, um, the vendor is going to ask you for a secret word and then you will give them that secret word, they'll enter it and that's gonna authorize that purchase. So using this process, of course, takes a little bit more time every time you change accounts or any of those type of things, but it really provides valuable protection against all those people that want to harm us. The other thing is, you know, be careful of public Wi-Fi. So, you know, Wi-Fi, of course, is a very easy way to access the internet and it's convenient. It can be at airports and coffee shops and all those type of things. But hackers and identity thefts are getting very creative. They can actually make networks look like a legitimate Wi-Fi. And so you might be tricked into using one that you think, oh, this might be a certain coffee shop website and uh, a Wi-Fi. And so you click on it and uh, they can then steal your data. The other thing is, even if it is a legitimate Wi-Fi, they can still hack that and uh, impact your connection and steal your data. So Wi-Fi is one of those very tricky things. The other thing is that's really on the rise is these phishing scams, which really involve a thief using an email and they're trying to trick you by giving them personal information. And these are getting very good. The messages often look like they're coming from a really reputable business and it takes an eagle eye to spot it. So here's my recommendation. If something seems off you're, and you're asked to click on a link or an offer or an action, don't click. Instead, take your cursor and hover it over the destination URL. If that link takes you to a different website than you would be expecting, or otherwise it seems illegitimate, then just ignore it. Also, if you haven't done so already, try to set up online access to all bank and credit card accounts. Um, you know, you can check them regularly and you can uh, report any suspicious activity early. Um, even though mail fraud is considered old school, it's still alive and well. So it's best to have financial statements like delivered to your email inbox instead of your mailbox. If that's not an option though, consider getting a PO box as a mailing address and that can also actually help with uh, package delivery. We know over the holidays, you know, package theft is huge as well. Um, if you can have the smaller packages delivered at work, if they authorize that, then of course, maybe you can do that. In addition, you can also request a hold with the postal service if you are going to be out for longer than a week. And even if you're not going to be out, you can just pretend you're out and then hold, you know, all that and pick it up at once, especially if you're expecting a bunch of packages. You know, online theft is more common than it used to be, but it really is still possible for criminals to gain access to credit card numbers, bank account information, and other sensitive paper. And so they literally drive around neighborhoods and steal mail. What they're looking for in particular is those uh, credit card offers. So those soft credit card offers that say, hey, you've been approved, fill this out. And what they do is they take those your name's already on it. If they have your information, they then just get that account in your name and it was sent to a different um, address. And so that's something that happens regularly. Also, as it relates to protecting those paper 
the paper that you use regularly is invest in a shredder and shred everything, bank statements, tax forms, medical bills, other documents containing financial data uh, before you throw them away. I thread every, I shred everything uh, that has my address on it, anything like that. I don't shred resident, you know, address to resident, but I shred everything else. And to safeguard documents like your social security or your tax returns or, you know, um, birth certificates, things like that, things that you can't get rid of and you have to have access to, do consider getting a safety box at a bank or buy a lockbox and you can store it in your house. You know, it really goes back to what I noted in session one. Your personal information is the most valuable. Second step you can do is monitor your credit. And right now through April 20th, 2022, you can get a free report once a week from three, uh, from each of those three major agencies, which is Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. 88% of identity theft is involving setting up new accounts in someone's name. That's what identity thefts, identity thieves like. So here's, you can, here's how you can um, spot theft on your credit card report. Look for addresses where you have not lived. Look for different spellings in your name. Um, identify companies that you did not apply for for credit. Those are the three significant ones. And then also to protect yourself one step further is only use one credit card for online shopping. Never use a debit card. That way it's a lot easier to identify, track and shut down the identity theft. Also, a credit card liability is only $50 and a debit card uh, liability is $500. So once you do that, identify a free credit monitoring service. I get mine through my credit union, but I'm also offered some with credit cards. Um, don't pay for anything you don't have to. Like I said, base crooks prefer to get your personal information and they prefer to use to open up new accounts more than stealing a credit card that's already existing and using that. The, there's a 2020 Federal Trade Commission study that discovered, like I said, 88% of that credit card fraud in uh, 2019 really consisted of thieves opening up new accounts. So if you're not planning on buying something in the near future, I would say consider putting, your, putting it on a freeze um, on your credit uh, account. Because if you put a freeze on it, it prevents anybody from opening your credit account uh, from opening a credit account in your name. So that's very important because that really makes your personal information then um, not as valuable, right? If you cannot open an account, which is what they want to do, there is no value in that person, personal information. Now, the big thing to remember is if you um, do freeze it, you have to pay a nominal fee to unfreeze it, but I think that's money, money well spent. And the third thing is, Take action if you are a victim of an identity theft. So if you're a victim of identity theft, you should report it immediately. And there are things you can do if you suspect that you have been a victim. So first, you're gonna file a police report, which is really important to protect yourself um, when they start using your information. Get copies of the police report because you may be asked um, for them when you notify insurers, medical providers, credit bureaus, or anybody else that you've been victimized. Second, file an identity theft complaint with the Federal Trade Commission online. Um, there's also a toll-free number, which is um, ID theft. So it's 4384338, which is ID theft, and the, the prefix is 877. So 877-438-4338. Um, I think, though, that the online process has greatly improved over the last 10 years, so I would recommend using it. Again. Consider placing a fraud or a freeze on your credit accounts. In addition to freezing your credit accounts, um, like I mentioned earlier, you can request that fraud alert to add um, if you've been victimized. And so what happens then is your credit card companies are going to be on an alert to look for suspicious activity. Dispute any fraudulent transactions as soon as you find them. Uh, the Fair Credit Billing Act requires that um, you are only financially responsible for unauthorized credit charges um, that exceed you know, $50. So you only, can, you only have to pay $50 as long as you dispute them within the first 60 days of that when you receive the bill. And like I said, if you're using a debit card, you're liable for $500. 
you know, most credit card issuers right now and retailers are sensitive to this increase in uh, fraudulent charges and, and many times, many times they waive them. So sometimes you may have to ask to waive them. So what are the key takeaways? Identity theft is going to happen and statistically speaking, it may happen to you, but you can mitigate the risk. And the way you can do that is get your credit report, check it, and if everything is appropriate, find a free credit monitoring service or pull one credit report every four months, kind of doing it yourself. If you're using credit monitoring, also pull your credit report once a year. And again, consider putting a freeze on it if you're not planning to use it in the future. Use only one credit card for online shopping and activate a secondary validation procedure if it is an option that's available to you. I know it's time consuming, but it is so worth it. And lastly, stay aware and share your knowledge. That's how we're gonna make an impact.